Sri Rupa sang very beautifully, Kevalastakam. It's a eight stanza verse that the refrain is Harer Nama Eva Kevalam. It holy name is everything. And the glories of that everything are in the eight, the eight verses, and that's our, our theme for this Japa retreat. We then um, discuss the advent yesterday evening, the advent of Nama Sankirtan <laughs> in a number of different ways. One of the ways I liked very much was Nam Alvar, the first of the Alvars of the Sri Sampradaya, wrote ten verses, pretty much just predicting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent in wonderful language, poetic language, in Tamil. And um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then, in turn, brought the Sankirtan. And again, a very nice song by Naratam Das Thakur was sung, Hari Hari Bipale, where Moods of humility were expressed by Naratam. That he's wasted his life knowingly drinking poison by not worshipping Radha Krishna. And fortunately, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, who's none different than Krishna, Prajendra Nandana Krishna, and Lord Nityananda is none other than Balaram, right within his song, to deliver the Jaghais and Madhais of this world. So he's praying for their deliverance, for, for his deliverance as they delivered him. And this phrase is there that we hear so often in Iskhan within the song Golokera Premadana Hari Nama Sankirtana, meaning the Harinam Sankirtan has descended directly from Goloka. In the upper part of the painting, that's Goloka. And the lower part of the painting, that's where we are, within the Mahatattva, within the material world. So from directly from the spiritual world, descending to this material world, comes the Harinam Sankirtan. Directly we're in, we're in connection with the spiritual world through Harinam. Of course, any form of chanting the holy name, the, the kirtan expression or the japa expression, and the power of that holy name is that prema dhana, it has the power to give prema. We then um, touched on the topic that I'm pretty much wanting to emphasize today, this morning, midday, evening, in preparation for our 64 round day tomorrow. This expression of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Namakara Bahir Haya, Nama Nahi Haya. Merely reciting the external syllables of the holy name does not mean that one is truly chanting the holy name. Hmm. So we're all engaged, at least in the external activity of chanting the syllables. But that's not the essence of chanting. There's the external and then there's the internal. And this Nama Sankirtan 
has these two elements, the external and we will be focusing on the internal coming up very soon. But this was the message from yes, little review from yesterday. The internal cultivation of chanting the holy name is attentiveness and aspiring for complete or undistracted attentiveness. And as that matures, attraction for the name and attraction for the processes of bhakti that arise when the desire to be in Krishna's service awakens, starting from chanting. It all starts from chanting. Jiva Goswami comments in his Sandarbhas that all of the nine processes rest upon chanting. He, he gives pages and pages and pages of scriptural reference, but the, the message is chanting. Following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, preceding chanting is hearing. Chanting what? Something that we've heard, the name. And specifically the pure holy name. And as that matures, attraction for the name and the processes. So this is an image I didn't show yesterday, but visually, you probably recognize the image, it's Michelangelo and <clears throat> depicting the hand on the right hand side is God and the hand on the left hand side is Adam and he's by the touch of God, life goes into Adam and that the, his portrayal of creation of man by God. And it's, it's mutual. In this case, our effort, this Japa retreat theme is we reach toward Krishna and Krishna will reach toward us likewise as we reach toward him. But we extend our attentiveness, our consciousness. We'll hear it shortly, this, this word cheta or consciousness. That's of the soul. So from the soul proper, extend our consciousness to the name, not just make the syllables but extend our consciousness to the name with eagerness to receive Goloka and all that's there. Within the name, there's everything because the holy name is everything. Just like a really nice verse, really short, when um, Vyasadeva under the instruction of Narada prior to composing again, second time, recomposing Srimad Bhagavatam, he's told to enter into a state of trance or samadhi, and then whatever you see in that state of samadhi, write a book just about that. So he does. Samyak praniyate amale. He goes into a complete state of fixing his mind upon the Supreme, Amale, without any distraction, without any impurity, without any contamination. And what did he experience? Apashat Purusham Purnam. Purusha Purnam. Purusha is the Supreme. And Purnam means complete. So the complete Supreme is everything. Jiva Goswami makes the remark. You may say, the other evening, I saw the full moon. And you don't have to say, oh, and by the way, I also saw the effulgence around the moon. It's implied. Similarly, Radha is, is there. The effulgence of the moon is compared to Radha and Krishna. He saw Radha and Krishna. And when you see Radha and Krishna, are they alone or are they in Goloka? They're not alone, floating in the sky somewhere and the Jyoti. 
they're in Goloka. And what's Goloka like? It's, it's everything. Purnam. There's Govardhan Hill, there's River Jamuna, the cows, the cowherd boys, the gopis, Mother Jasoda, Nanda Maharaj, the whole shebang. He saw the whole thing. Apashat Purusham Purnam. And how did that happen? This one. He extended his consciousness in a trance of meditation upon Krishna and everything became disclosed to him. So that was the method recommended by Narada Muni to Vyas and we're recommended to do the same with the name because the holy name is everything. Purusham Purnam. So, once again, as far as I'm concerned, the emphasis I wish to make is, is this one. Let us get closer to the point where our consciousness is simply extended to the descending mercy of the holy name that has come into this world by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grace and have our consciousness extend towards the Supreme. It's an effort, it's the internal cultivation message of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And that was what we discussed yesterday for those of you that weren't with us. Little summary. So um, now the theme of the holy name of the Lord is everything is going to follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Shikshastaka number one. Because in, within, as we know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't write anything that we know of other than these eight verses. And these eight verses are, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, um, there, it's, it's a map of how to get to Krishna Prema, how to, re, how to receive Goloka through the name. See, it's, it's GPS. Turn right, 500 feet, turn left, go straight, watch out for the curve, and the whole, the whole everything. It's a map how to get to Goloka through the portal of the holy name. So let us chant Shikshastaka verse number one together. Cheto Darpana Marjanam Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vidharanam Vidyavadho Jivanam Anandam Bodhivardhanam Pratipadam Purnam Ratasvadanam Sarvatma Snapanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So this morning, Krishna's permission, I'll try to go through the first three and this evening the final five of these eight. Again, bearing in mind our theme, I'm going to repeat it several times, so hopefully it'll enter. It's all of this is to help support our chanting of the Holy Name, and in particular the 64 round day tomorrow. So, in his writings, two places, but in whole, primarily the Sri Bhajana Rahasya by Bhakti Nautakur, he details how these eight verses carry one to. Krishna Prema, Golokera Prema Dhana, step by step, step by step, to the highest stages of Braja Prem. The highest stages is the love of Radha for Krishna. We are not capable of the love of Radha for Krishna, but the love of the servants of Radha for Krishna. That's the gift of Mahaprabhu. Shikshastaka is that 
map and my appeal, one more time, is there's a, a lot of really beautiful understandings that our acharyas have presented in, in this regard. But the purpose is not just information. Don't stop with the information aspect. Try to focus on this inspiration, how to go the next step, the next step of directing consciousness to the holy name. so that our relationship with Krishna in the form of the holy name becomes stronger, just as was described by Bhaktivinoda. Attraction for the name, attachment to the name, ecstasy when chanting the name, love for Krishna in the form of the name, because within the holy name there is everything. Krishna in his fullness, which means everything. So here's the first of the seven, Cheta Darpana Marjanam. So there's the three words, Cheta. This is taken directly from Cheta Nucharitamrita, of the heart. Darpana is the mirror, and Marjanam is cleansing, just like we sing for at Mangalarti, Mandira Marjanado. The spiritual master is very pleased when he sees that the devotee is engaged in mandira, marjana, cleansing the temple. So this is cheta marjana, cleansing the heart, cleansing the mirror of the heart. So it's metaphor, the mirror of the heart. And I want to spend some time, because I feel this important, to understand what this word cheta means, the heart. And it has different, it's Sanskrit language has different meanings according to the application. Within Kapila's Sankhya philosophy, it's one of the 24 elements. So that means it's on the material side. But in chapter 25, which is before he details the 24 elements, he uses this word cheta in a different way. Very understandably so. Um, when one is in material consciousness, that's one kind of cheta. When one's consciousness is fully in the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, it's another consciousness. Cheta. Which means it's it's... Um, like supposing there's a hand and a, a glove and when the fingers wiggle the glove wiggles and when you take the glove away put it on the floor of the table it doesn't wiggle because it's just a covering so consciousness that's covered moves because there's something inside pure consciousness and then there's covered consciousness so this cheta darpana marjanam is not removing the core consciousness the soul's pure consciousness it's the covering it's the it's the 24th element and um, there's several other references pardon me while I Definition of terms are, it's, it's important, and definition depends on context. So the use of a term depends on the context. So there's, there's an example of this word cheta being used by Lord Brahma. This is the contaminated consciousness application, where he says, he's praying, third canto, chapter nine. He's praying to the personality of Godhead, Krishna, to free himself from contaminated consciousness, the way the Prabhupada is translated as pride, as I undertake the task of creation, please keep my consciousness fixed on you so that I don't become falsely proud, cheta, 
a contaminated form of consciousness where I think I'm the creator. This applies to us. It's Lord Brahma. He, he asked the same thing in Canto 2, where he comes before the personality of Godhead. The personality of Godhead says, you pleased me very much. That's why I've come before you. Please ask for a benediction. He asked for two. He's smart. One of them is, please free me. Please protect me from the false ego of thinking that I'm creator when I do the creation because I'm just your instrument. That's pure consciousness. Contaminated consciousness, which the holy name Chaita Dharpa Namarjanam has the capacity to free us from, is the contaminated type leaving behind, you know, the, the hand without the glove on it. Consciousness that's not contaminated. Then this word cheta, several other places in the Bhagavatam. One is where um, Devahuti is having discussion with Kardamamuni, and she's asked him a question, and Kardamamuni kind of goes into this trance of contemplation upon his Lord Vishnu. This is before Kapila is born. And he's smiling very mildly, very serenely. And he doesn't say what, where his mind is going, but she's his wife. She understands. And her contentment is his contentment in his relationship is pure consciousness fixed upon Lord Vishnu. Although they have these activities together, husband and wife, his consciousness is completely pure. Cheta is used in that uncontaminated sense. And there's another very nice one where um, early in the third canto, it's interesting, I find it interesting, that this word cheta is used in multiple places before it even appears in Kapila's Sankhya philosophy. So we have this distinction between contaminated and pure consciousness. So Uddhava, the, the term of pure consciousness is used when he hears some questions from Vidura and he also goes into this trance-like state. Tears are coming down his cheeks. He's in this stunned state of pure consciousness, thinking of his Supreme Lord. And then he later speaks. He struggles to come to external consciousness, not the contaminated type, and starts speaking about Krishna because Vidura's questions are about Krishna. So he speaks about Krishna, in a number of ways, he just recites Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan and Krishna's pastimes outside of Vrindavan. It goes on for like a chapter and a half. He pressed his Krishna button. He just goes. And he speaks of Krishna when he came before Vasudeva and Devaki. He apologized. He said, I'm Balaram and I are really sorry. We've been away from you for so long, but we were afraid of Kamsa. So we hid ourselves in Vrindavan. And when I hear Krishna speak in that way, it, it shatters my heart. That's the pure consciousness kind, Cheta. So the cleansing that's being spoken of here is this cleansing of the contaminated type. Just like this message from 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita where the upside down banyan tree or the tree where the roots grow up and the branches grow down. The, the lake, the surface of reflection of desire is the mind, cheta, the contaminated type. And then there's the other one. So the holy name can cleanse the bottom one. 
material desire. And how is material desire cleansed? By pulling the root. And what's the root of material desire is ignorance. Because ignorance leads to ignorant desire. Desire isn't the problem. It's ignorance that's the problem. So the ignorance arising from ignoring Krishna, who is at the top, is corrected or eliminated progressively, gradually, by the holy name, by contact with the holy name. This effort to extend our consciousness to the name takes away the ignorance. And with that contaminated consciousness, the ignorant desires of the living entity. So the metaphor used by Mahaprabhu is this one, the, the mirror of the mind or mirror of the heart, cheta darpana marginum, heart, mind, materially sullied consciousness. That's what's being cleansed, the covering, so that we can then see the true self and we can see Krishna simultaneously. Here's the um, breakdown of the translation, Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years. Just like the image on the right, that's Mahaprabhu and his associates in Puri, where they're cleansing the Gundicha temple. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur details this cleansing of the Gundicha temple is likened to cleansing the heart because they want Jagannath to come. So they make the place clean so he'll want to come to the temple, Gundicha temple. Similarly, the chanting and the whole process of bhakti is a cleansing process, exactly what the verse is saying, darpana marginam, cheta darpana marginam. It's cleansing so that Krishna, who is already there in the heart, actually, but we can then see him instead of not see him, just like a mirror that's covered by dust. You can't see your reflection, but you clear the dust, then you can see your reflection. The chanting of Krishna's name is a purifying agent that cleanses our hearts of envy, the root cause of our descent to this world, and other bad qualities we have since acquired, like lust, greed, and anger. So this envy, that's an obstacle for us to be undistracted when chanting. I mean, we have absorption in the temporary, and so the mind wants to go to the temporary because we're conditioned by the temporary and trying to be an enjoyer. But the root of that one is our envy of Krishna, who is the actual enjoyer, as this image shows. There's the living entity, lower right-hand side, leaving the blissful situation of Goloka and coming into the dark material world by misuse of free will, by envy by dvesha, according to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, icha dvesha samutena dvandva mohena bharata. O conqueror of the foe, all living entities are born into delusion, dvandva moha, bewildered by the dualities arisen from icha and dvesha. So, just as that image shows, we enter the material world overcome by these two, Icha and Dvesha. This is ignoring Krishna due to envy and desire. That is to say, we desire the position of being the enjoyer, but there's a problem. There's already somebody who's the enjoyer. So there's Dvesha towards the enjoyer. How do you overcome that? The holy name has the power built within it to overcome it. 
the dirty mirror of the mind. That's what the image is on the right. That's a dirty mirror. And you look inside the dirty mirror and what do you see? Dirt. You can't see the self. You can't see the cause of all causes. You can't see it. You maybe even notionally you can say, yeah, I believe in the soul. I believe in God. What, what else? What's left? It's not so simple. The, the, the cleansing process beyond believing something is required. That's what this chanting of the holy name does. It cleanses the heart so that one can properly see. What we have some faith in, the cleansing agent is the holy name. And then the holy name appears within the heart. Exactly Rupa Goswami's teaching, beautiful verse from his drama, Lalita Madhava. You know that verse? How much nectar are in the two syllables Krishna, who can say? Starts with the tongue. When vibrating the sound, Krishna, Krishna is dancing on one's tongue and one desires many, many tongues. And then that sound enters the ear and such nectar of the sound, this is if you're hearing attentively, and otherwise you fall asleep. <coughs> such nectar, one desires millions of ears. It would look funny. But it's a desire to hear more and hear more. And then the sound goes into the heart. And when the sound of Krishna enters into the chamber of the heart, the mind becomes stunned and the senses become inert. Such nectar in the holy name. So these are mature stages of chanting, but it's when attentiveness or consciousness is by practice extended, by cultivation, extended to the name. That's what we're here for. That's Mahaprabhu's teaching. The potency of the holy name is such that it can achieve that. And other processes don't work the same. There isn't another process that works the same. There's a nice reference in Vishnu Dhamotara where um, there's this exchange in brief. There's one Chatriya in the reference is a Chatra Bandhu. So he's born in a royal family, but his behavior isn't royal. His behavior is very dirty. And so many sins throughout his whole life he's committed. And then some, um, suffering so much from his sins, he then goes to a Brahmana and asks, what can I do to overcome the reactions of these so many sins. And he gives these detailed recommendations, how to overcome sin, the karmakanda type of recommendations. And then he says, I, I can't do all that. Give me something easier, something I can do. So the brahmana says, if you can't do all of this, then I'll tell you something else which is easy. But you have to do it in the way that I'm describing. And the, the king then says, I can't do it. My mind is too fickle. Tell me, what can I do with my body and my words? So he tells him to chant the holy name. O oh son, whether in hunger, thirst, or falling down, while standing up, lying down, departing, or coming, sing the name of Govinda. Because even if you're all these other things, fickle, contaminated, and you know the whole list, and can't do the other ones, don't have the determination, the desire, even though you don't like the suffering part, what to do? So this is the recommendation. It's so chaita darpa marginum. The Bhagavatam 
speaks, of course, on this topic. By following the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or undergoing atonement, sinful men do not become as purified as by chanting once. Of course, we don't stop with once. But the power of even once, the power of the holy name is cannot be compared to anything of beneficial activities. There's so many religions, there's so many rituals and so many things that people may do. The Bhagavatam makes it very clear. The chanting of the holy name is the most powerful. And now, as that cleansing, Chaita Dharpa Namarjanam, matures, what happens? Then the material condition fades, like specifically the condition of identifying with the body. As long as you have a body, there's four mandates, eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. And of the four, fearing is the strongest. You do any one of the other three and some threat comes along, you stop the other three and you do the one. So how do you, how do you go beyond fear? According to the Bhagavatam, it's in the second half of this. Bhaktya. Aikyesham. So this bhayam is the word for fear. And bhayam, siyat, it arises from absorption in things that are seem to be separate from Krishna. And when one gets absorbed in seeing things as separate from Krishna, one can't see oneself either. You don't know who you are. You don't know who is Isha, who is the Supreme, and you're in the condition of fear. But what's the remedy? Remedy is in the second half. Let's see. Nice translation. Fear arises when a living entity misidentifies himself as the material body because of absorption in the external illusory energy of the Lord. When the living entity thus turns away from the Supreme Lord, he also forgets his own constitutional position as a servant of the Lord. This bewildering, fearful condition is affected by the potency for illusion called maya. Therefore, what to do? An intelligent person should engage unflinchingly in the unalloyed devotional service of the Lord under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. It's right in the verse. Whom he should accept as his worshipable deity, as, as his very life and soul. That's the problem and its remedy. And it starts, the process for us is the chanting of the holy name. What do we know? We're in illusion. We, most people don't even know that they're suffering, although they're suffering. It's kind of so obvious, but how is everything? Oh, fine. So as that condition of misidentification with the body dissipates, um, there's this nice understanding that going beyond the material identification is not in itself part of the cultivation of the name. It just happens. The cultivation of, I'll say it again, backwards or the other way. The real cultivation of the name is taking shelter of the name. Now, there's an obstacle. That's our identification with the temporary. Which goes first, the horse or the cart? You put the horse first, and the horse pulls the cart. Don't put the cart before the horse. So the horse that pulls the cart is the name. And it appears in the the third of the Shikshastakam verses. Remember this little example when we get there. Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vidharanam. The holy name has the power to cleanse the ident misidentification, the, the mirror of the mind that's covered by dirt. So 
becoming free from fear is not the um, goal. It's a, a, a byproduct, chaita, dharpa, and marginum. Bhakti doesn't depend on other elements. And the holy name doesn't either. How much fearful one is, how much one identifies with the body one is in. Bhakti is independent. The name is independent. If we have faith, small thing, if we have faith, then we can be carried. And in the mature stage, one's spiritual identity becomes awakened, just as Lord Brahma, by chanting of his mantra, his spiritual identity became awakened. So, so much more to say. But here's the second. Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam. Bhava is very different than Bhava. <laughs> bhava is material existence. And material existence is compared to a big Dava Agni. Agni is fire. Dava Agni is a forest fire. Maha Dava Agni is a big blazing forest fire. Material existence is compared to that. And the holy name has the capacity, this is following the cleansing of consciousness, is to remove material existence, the blazing fire of material existence altogether, extinguish it, not minimize it. Here's Krishna who is extinguishing the fire in Vrindavan. There's, in fact, it's such a, an important pastime, he does it twice. He withdraws fire from Vrindavan because the cows are at risk and the cowherd boys are at risk and they call to Krishna and he withdraws the fire. The holy name, we may not yet be at the stage where we can be in Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, but we can chant the holy name and the blazing fire of material existence can become extinguished, the blazing fire of repeated birth and death. So as the holy name purifies, that's Chaita Dharpa and Amarjanam, Krishna's name also protects sincere chanters from any further contamination from the world, the energy, and those afflicted by it. We're, we're chanting and then we go out into the world associating at school or at, at work or in the marketplace or wherever we are with people that are quite contaminated. So what's going to protect us from that further contamination? The holy name. In, in the verse of Bhagavad Gita, this Nitya Vairina, or the eternal enemy of the living entity, even when you become protected, there's an enemy. That's Kama Rupena. And Kama Rupena, the, the form of lust, Kama Rupena, it's never satisfied. Dushparena, and it burns like fire. So Krishna withdraws that, Kama Rupena, just as we saw before. The protection is there. The potential is there, just like when there's a big forest fire. Fortunately, we don't live in California. Fortunately. I mean, it's a nice place. Nice weather. But for some reason, they're getting lots of very damaging forest fire. And they, 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 you know, whatever they have to stop the forest fire, they can't put out the forest fire. So how do you put out the forest fire material existence? The downpour of the torrential rain of the holy name. There's a little passage from Kata Upanishad in the images showing uh, Nachiketa, the little boy, who's uh, a brahmana, and he's sent by his spiritual master to, for the purpose of yagya, rather than just going to the forest to gather wood, he's sent to Yamaraja's place to get some fire from Yamaraja's place. So he goes to Yamaraja's abode and he sees this blazing fire in all directions. The living entities engulfed in flames. 
And so he very mildly goes to Yamaraj and says, can I have some of those flames my guru requested for our yagya? And Yamaraj said, I'm sorry, but I can't give you these flames. It's, it's, it's from the living entities themselves. Before the living entities came here, there was no fire. The fire is from their sinful deeds. And so you, I can't just give you the fire. It's coming from them, from their sinful deeds. Sorry. The nature of sinful activity, how do you extinguish? So you, there may be some procedure. There are procedures that can reduce uh, the reactions of sins by atonement and so many other things, but they can't extinguish it because the tendency still remains. A nice example of this is Sagara sent his 60,000 sons to find the, the horse that Indra stole and left by Kapila. And when they reached Kapila's ashram in the bottom part of the universe, they thought, ah, not only there's the horse, but here's the thief. So the 60,000 sons with their weapons raised they started to attack Kapila. Now, in the Bhagavatam where this is discussed, Shukadeva Goswami says, what's in this image is wrong. There are some people that say, from Kapila's eyes came fire, and he burned the 60,000 sons. He said, that's, that's a wrong understanding. Rather, they burned by the heat of their own sins, from sins, comes the burning experience of material existence. And the chanting of the holy name has the capacity to remove that. This is a, a, a passage from the 12th canto, spoken by Sutta, pictured here, to the sages of Naimisharanya. In the, in the 12th canto, he says, last chapter, of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Hari, the congregational chanting of whose holy names destroys all sinful reactions, that Bhava Maha Davagni, and the offerings of obeisances unto whom relieves all material suffering, the suffering that arises. What does suffering arise from? not just sin or bad desire, it arises from ignorance. The root cause of suffering, over and over, I heard Prabhupada say it so many times, the root cause of suffering is ignorance. Chanting of the holy name eradicates ignorance because instead of ignoring Krishna, we're hopefully being attentive to Krishna. So once again, the internal activity, not just the external making of the sound. But consciousness reaching to touch the name and then receive the fullness that the holy name wants to give us, Krishna wants to give us the fullness of his mercy. We're just stubborn and dull and very contaminated. Nonetheless, the holy name is very, very merciful. This is the power, bhava maha da vagni nirvapanam. Same idea. In contrast, other processes don't have that same capacity to remove the very to the very root, the blazing fire of material existence. Other. This is Shukadeva Goswami speaking. Other processes cannot be successful speaks of yoga and austerities and try, efforts to try to elevate oneself beyond material existence. You can go up, but such methods, after some time, one again goes back to material activities because the mind is not completely freed from the modes of nature. The modes of nature we have affinity for. It's why we're here why we're placed within the material creation. There's affinity for it, very deep, very deep. 
So how to go beyond that? It, 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 the holy name has the capacity. It's an image right from the internet of rain coming down and hitting the surface of water, a lake. And where the water coming down from the sky hits the lake, there's ripples of water and disturbances. We're in the material world. There is disturbances. And how does one remain undisturbed even when there's disturbances? Is it possible? The chanting of the holy name carries one to that position because one can need no longer identify with the temporary if one instead has identified with transcendence, with Krishna and our connection with Krishna. Bhava maha da vagni nirvapanam. Same ideas expressed in Brahma's prayers. Towards the end of the whole of Brahma Samhita, karmani nir dehiti kintu jabhakti bhajam. The, the translation reads, Govinda minimizes or near the hat, near the hati. He minimizes or nullifies karma, the reactionary influences of the devotee's past. So this bhakti bhajam is the remedy. And the commentary says it's all forms of bhakti. It starts with the name. And from the name, other forms of bhakti come. And in Jiva Goswami discusses this in his commentary on this verse of Brahma Samhita, that deep faith arises, exactly from uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, by performance of kirtan, one attains faith. Just like yesterday we discussed Prabhupada's deep faith in the holy name. And by performance of regular chanting, japa and kirtan, faith in the holy name that uh, carries one much closer to the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet than any other process. I don't know if you've met, I have met many people in the course of my travels that do some type of meditation and they a theme, not always, but a theme is I from meditation I can understand there's this there's this place. This place of consciousness that's far beyond anything of this world, the ordinary consciousness of this world, I know that that place exists, but I can't stay there. So how do I stay there? How do I go there and stay there? The Bhagavatam is teaching, this Shikshastaka is teaching, you have to go beyond the elevation phase where the modes of nature and the Faith in the shelter of the holy name can carry one to that position better, more completely than anything else. By meditation performed in the Satya Yuga, one does not attain the same deep faith. We're very fortunate. We're, we're unfortunate. We're, it's the age of Kali. There's all kinds of turmoil all around us. But there's one good thing. Kaler dosh nidhei rajan yasti ekamahan gunan kirtanad eva krishnasya. Because through that regular chanting, kirtan and japa and striving to bring our consciousness to the name, to that sound vibration where everything is there. Even beyond Satya Yuga, we can achieve reference that Jiva Goswami makes in his Sandarvas. Here's his quote from Skanda Purana. In Kali Yuga, the great devotees worship the Lord by performing kirtan. And Jiva Goswami's com comment, these words of the Skanda Purana glorify 
performance of kirtan, which brings great faith in the Supreme Lord. The Lord, who is very merciful to the fallen souls, does not reveal any spiritual path better than kirtan. Now, we're here for this purpose, to go beyond whatever it is that we do in our chanting every day to another level of our everyday chanting and everyday kirtan and everyday japa. Nourishing of faith is intended by all of these nice explanations given by, in this case, Jiva Goswami and our other acharyas that are being referenced. It's to lift us through their association, their encouragement, their revealing the, the spiritual reality of the power of the holy name. Last point on this um, section. Buddhism teaches the goal is nirvana. I've been speaking on this in different contexts, but uh, nirvana literally means, Prabhupada's translation of the word nirvana is cessation, nirvana, cessation of material contamination. So when there's cessation of material contamination, what do you do? What, what's, what's it like there? What's nirvana like? And it's not just cessation. The, the, the teaching of, of the Bhagavatam is this position of nirvana is after nirvana, one engages in the activity of the soul. So that's coming up in the, the, the next one, number three of the seven excellences. And I hope I can complete this because time is moving. Later, you can look up this reference. It's chapter 6, Bhagavad Gita, texts 20 through 23, where Prabhupada explains what I've been sh sharing here. These first two of the excellences, Chaita Dharpana Marjanam and Bhava Mahada Vagni Nirvapanam, they are equivalent to nirvana, the cleansing and completely extinguishing of material existence. That's what the first two are saying. The holy name has that capacity. And then what do you do? You engage in devotional service. So the practice of the holy name done properly, when you extend your consciousness not just by lip and tongue, but through the internal effect of bringing your consciousness to the fullness of the holy name, progressively, gradually, this nirvana state is to be is achieved. I'll say it again. The end goal of Buddhism is already built within the first two of Shikshastaka verses. Read this purport. It's very clear. And then what do you do? Uh, according to the Bhagavatam, what you do is you engage in real life of the living entity, Svarupena Vyavastati, in the language of the Bhagavatam. And you can look up that reference. It's where the, the ten topics of the Bhagavatam are described. But it's dependent. You can't be lazy. You can't just be mechanical. You can't just be external and chant your rounds. It requires this effort, internal cultivation, where consciousness goes towards the name in a mood of taking shelter. And then the third, and we'll finish with this, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. Chandrika. Chandra is the moon and Chandrika is the moonshine or the diminutive of the moon, Chandrika. And um, the moon or the shining of the moon is compared 
it's metaphorical, to um, Shreya, it gives fortune. The life of the living entity is awakened by this good fortune from the moonshine. And it's likened when the good fortune of the living entity awakens, it's compared to a lotus that vitananam, that expands or spreads. You have to do the first two to get this one. But the white lotus of good fortune is expanded. Like during the night, anyone that's seen lotuses um, knows that at night the lotus closes because the sun goes down. And then when the sun rises, the lotus opens again. So what's the lotus at night? This is the night of Kali Yuga. The light is gone. It's the dark age of Kali. But in this dark age of Kali, the moonshine expands the petals of the lotus. And the good fortune is not exactly coming from the lotus, it's coming from the rays of the benediction moon. And the rays of the benediction moon, we can say that's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the holy name, because he came to give the holy name. And it's these rays of moonshine that awaken or expand the petals of the white lotus. Um, from the same word Shreya is used by Lord Brahma in his prayers in the 10th canto. My dear Lord, devotional service unto you is the best path of self-realization. Shreya, Shritim. Bhaktim. He goes through a, a series of explanations of other things that are inadequate, same as what we've done. Inadequate. But there's one thing that's not inadequate. It, it's, it's the best. The best is the Shreya, Shreya Uttama, the, the best form of um, perfection, self realization, cleansing, this bhakti process that's awakened by chanting itself. So one might ask, in the metaphor, why isn't it the lotus? Because traditionally, um, lotuses are symbols of peace and tranquility and contentment and all those nice things. So the, the metaphor is not the lotus that's giving this benediction, it's the moon the shining of the moon because it's the shining of the moon that opens the, the lotus. The shining of the moon is the holy name, the holy name when received or approached in the mood mentioned already. Similar reference again from Kata Upanishad, this discussion between Nachiketa and Yamaraj. So when he went to get the fire on behalf of his guru, there were some questions that he's a Brahmin boy and Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. So he's taking the opportunity to ask questions. And Yamaraj explains this Shreyas Cha, Prayas Cha, Manusham Etas. He says, the wise reject the Prayas and choose instead Shreyas that which is permanently beneficial. The foolish choose the prayas, which with its result in conceptions of gain and acquisition of fleeting pleasures. So that's these, Prabhupada has explained it. <laughs> I like how he does. There are two things in Sanskrit. There are two things, shreyas and prayas. And prayas means short-term gain and shreyas means long-term gain. So, largely, in this world of pravriti, per persons go to the Vedas to get something that's in the prayas category, short-term gain. They want health or wealth or good wife or 
something, destination in heaven, maybe a little bit longer term, something. But that's all in the prayas category. And Yamaraj is saying, right in the Upanishads, um, wise people don't go for that. They go for the shreyas. Permanently beneficial, long-term gain. Prophet likens it to a child. They like to play. But then the parent at some point says, well, I know you like to play, but you have to go to school. No, I want to play. Well, you're going to grow up, and one day you're going to need the education to navigate your way through the adult world, and so you have to take some time out from playing and do your studies. So the playing is the prayas, and then the studies is the shreyas, and then there's shreya uttama. So similarly, when approaching the Vedas, one can approach the Vedas or spirituality or religiousness for prayas. And the advice is, so shreyas and the, the chanting of the holy name just gives it. One may, may not even know what's what, but it gives it. Shreya Kairva Chandrika, the Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. Chanting awakens shreyas, this hankering for pure devotion to Krishna. It starts with just wanting some service, but it can immature to wanting pure devotion to Krishna, which is the soul's dormant propensity to serve Krishna with love. And then continue chanting. Further chanting, revise that loving devotion, which qualifies one for the greatest good fortune, Krishna's association. So that's it for this morning. Now, these review. Why are we doing this? This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving us a roadmap how to take this gift that he gave and get to the destination he wants us to reach. We don't even have to put it in our GPS. He's put it in our GPS. The destination is Goloka. And from Goloka, the holy name has descended. He's giving us the map how to get to Goloka through the chanting of the holy name. It's already there. But we're covered and distracted and unfortunate. And, you know, victims of this age of Kali, contaminated to the max, some of us more than others. And so what to do? Chant. And the, the cleansing, not just by the mechanical, something for sure, but not just the external, but the internal cultivation of one more time. Extending our attentiveness, even contaminated consciousness, to the supreme, pure, holy name, so that the contaminated consciousness can become cleansed, not just the mechanical, the conscious chanting of the holy name with, with sincere effort to become cleansed and purified. To that degree, the cleansing takes place. And then followed by that is the whole of material, the blazing fire of material existence is extinguished. The, the potential is there. The takes one beyond the neutral state, the nirvana stage, the material cessation stage, up to the stage of hankering again for pure devotion and Krishna's constant association and continuing the chanting, this awakening further of Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. It, it, vitaranam, it, it, it expands. It pervades our life in all that we do. It starts from our, you can say, our conscious chanting receiving the mercy that Mahaprabhu came to give us. 
step by step by step. Okay, so we have some time for discussion. See if there's any comments or questions. Right behind you. Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for a wonderful class. Uh, I have a request. Going for the rest of this time we're together, please leave the that little thank you for the nice class preamble. For uh, any, not just you, anyone, just please leave that out. Thank you. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, teaching, Hari uh, Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama Eva Kevalam. Uh, so my question is that, <clears throat> like uh, Lord Hari has uh, unlimited names, forms, and uh, in the current scenario also we see uh, different sampradayas uh, uh, chant the Lord Hari's name different, like Govinda, Venkatesha, uh, Swaminar, and so many ways. So my question is that Lord Chaitanya's teaching is that you chant only Hare Krishna Mahamantra or chant any Lord Hari's name, but the ultimate goal is love of God. So this what is the how we can understand Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. Okay. Give him the microphone. In Hari Nama Chintamani, you've heard of that book? written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This question is addressed in a slightly different way, but Haridas Thakur says, there's primary and there's secondary names. Secondary names can give liberation. Primary names carry one to Goloka. Now, liberation may mean Vaikuntha, but primary names are describing the Lord in his relationship with his devotees. He gives his example, Nanda, Nandana, and Yasoda, Nandana. Or as you mentioned, Govinda. Krishna in his loving dealings with his devotees, primary names, they, they have the potency to awaken love for the Supreme in his spiritual realm. Whereas other names are more describing his position as the Supreme, Parameshwara, Paramatma, etc., Parabrahman. His divinity, potency of those names carries one beyond the contamination of the material world to this liberated state. Primary names carry one to the stage of love. No. One can enter into Vaikuntha through the chanting of the secondary names, but entering into Goloka is to come through the primary names, or can come. And so we give emphasis to the primary names and full respect to the chanting of Krishna's name in any form, the names of Hari, Hari or Harer Nama, the names of Hari. Now, for Vaishnavas, particularly Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we say Hari Kata or Hari Kirtan. For us, that means the Supreme Lord in Goloka. Because he's Hari. He takes away and gives. Takes away all inauspiciousness, gives all auspiciousness. That's our understanding or our mood of Hari. And one may not have that same perspective of the exalted quality of love that's in Goloka. And so according to the disposition of the, of the one who's regarding the Supreme, that's, that's the consciousness that will awaken. 
So we give emphasis to primary names. Just like this nice song that he sang this morning. It's just, it's not entirely, but primarily, primary names. And varieties. Krishna and Vrindavan, different names of Krishna and Vrindavan. Just hearing the names that carries with it that attraction. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, there was a part in the second uh, Sikhsastakam. You, you said something like Unflinch, unflinchingly in the unalloyed devotion of service of Krishna. And I was thinking my, in my own life, uh, there's times when I am ready to dive in and then there's times when I'm very reluctant to do any, any uh, devotional service. Hmm. So I was wondering, is that... Uh, is it correlated to uh, the material c contamination or my own personal desires that it's go both. against? It, it, what you're describing is unsteady bhakti. Sign curve. Do, 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 do. So, and it's, it's, it's corresponding to both. But it, it, the, 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 the horse is bhakti, and the cart is, you know, the contamination. <laughs> so to move from the contamination is not just work on the contamination, it's work on the bhakti that will then give the spiritual strength to deal with the contamination. So focus should go, so I'm over answering your question, it's both, but give primary attention to bhakti. Bhajana Kriya in the language of Rupa Goswami, your, act, your cultivation of devotional practice and activity in the sadhana stage. That will give you strength and clarity and sense of purpose to go further with the, that which is causing this unsteadiness. So I should reject the, the desires well, you, 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 that's fantastic that you can, but more realistically, you just tolerate it. If you, the negative is, well, let me contemplate it a little bit. Maybe it's important. And by contemplating, then attachment to the, the, con the object of contemplation grows. It's how the mind works. And so, at least in the beginning, it's the advice of Bhagavad Gita to tiksha. You tolerate it. The converse is you pay attention to it. You invest consciousness in it. And then it takes on life. There, there is no life. It takes on, it's as if it's alive. And, you know, it's important. I have to deal with it. So, you may have to deal with it, but deal it within the context of the horse that's pulling the cart. Redirect your attention to bhakti. And then you can deal with it with, with some spiritual clarity and some spiritual strength. Otherwise, so... Thank you. It's bigger than life. Yes, I thought I saw some activity over there. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, the slide on the, um, the Jiva Goswami's comment on deep faith yeah. that caught my attention. Um, he mentions there that the meditation process in the Satya Yuga cannot offer the same amount of deep faith that the, the chanting of the Holy Name can offer. Yes. Um, I was wondering, like, why um, in the Satya Yuga the prescription is even the meditation uh, when, I mean, why not the chanting of the holy name for all the yugas, given that that's the uh, most potent form for a Well, <clears throat> let's think of Dhruva Maharaj. And it was Satya Yuga. And he was engaged in meditation because that's the process for the age. And 
He was given a mantra. And his meditation went to the mantra. So mantra was there. The special <clears throat> dispensation for the age of Kali is one need not do all of those austerities that Dhruva did because we couldn't do it anyways. We're just given this one thing. Now, given this one thing and it's Kali Yuga, the mind's distracted from the name and therefore all these uh, glories of the holy name and reinforcers, inspirations, faith-building messages about the importance, the singular importance of the holy name. While we do so many other things also, so many other things. Yes, back there. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I have two questions. Uh, uh, one from the studies class where uh, I couldn't catch up to, uh, the part. Uh, you mentioned uh, in the Alvars Pasuram there is some sort of a reference of a, a chanting. You weren't here yesterday. No, I was, I was trying to catch up in the online, so I couldn't get that piece. So, you want to know what's the reference? Yes. I'll say it slowly. The first of the Alvars, Nam Alvar, composed 1,000 verses, 10 of which are specifically glorifications of with musical instruments, with arms upraised, dancing and calling out loudly the holy name of the Lord. This is... 43 years is when he appeared after Krishna's departure. So just at the very beginning of Kali Yuga, predicting Mahaprabhu's Nam Sankirtan. Not our Sampradaya, but the message isn't Sampradaya specific. So the topic yesterday was the advent of Nam Sankirtan. So that was the reference. It's, it should be heard in this manner. Okay? And, uh, and you also mentioned in, in, the, in, in the slide like um, Nama takes beyond Nirvana and you also mentioned um, beyond Nirvana is something attaining Swarupena Vavastiti. Yes. I would like to know what is the experience of the Sarupena Vavastiti, you know, how does Well, it you're going to have to fashion your seatbelt and stay on in devotional service for a while. If you want to know it, you have to experience it. You can hear about it, but you won't know it in the same way. The fra read that, that purport, and it's there. The answer to your question is there. But in short... <coughs> There's these two things, cleansing and eradicating. Chaita Dharpana Marjanam, completely eliminating material existence. Cessation of material existence. That's the second Shikshastaka. Prabhupada says right in that purport, that's nirvana. They're the same thing. Shikshastaka too and nirvana are the same thing. Mahaprabhu was giving that through the name, the potential. We, with faith, we have to keep going. And then what's beyond that? What's on the other side of nirvana? Swarupain of Yavastati. That phrase comes from Canto 2, Chapter 10, where... Shukadeva Goswami is giving the ten topics of the Bhagavatam and one of them is liberation and then he explains liberation means not just the neutral not just the cessation but the positive activity of the soul the life of the living entity in its pure state 
Svarup, Javastati, devotional service. That's liberation. So that's leading us into Shikshastaka 3. What comes after Nirvana? What do you do? Devotional service in your spiritual form. You may still have a material body, and as long as you have, you move it, like the hand that wiggles the glove. And when the glove is gone, the hand still wiggles. The spiritual form continues with spiritual identity, with spiritual activity, with spiritual shelter, with spiritual consciousness, cheta that's not contaminated. Thank you. Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, this is related to contaminated consciousness and pure consciousness. Um, so my consciousness is contaminated. I don't know what the experience of pure consciousness, but is it a two-part question? Is it possible that through the process of chanting at some point in time, I will be able to see the contaminations in my consciousness? Well, aren't you experiencing that even today? Let's say, you know, in a different way. Before we began the process of devotional service, we didn't have a clue about how contaminated our consciousness was. And then we started devotional service. And then we just started discovering all this dirty things, which we didn't even know were there before. Yes? Yes. So... We're experiencing it now. And the power of bhakti is it can remove those things. We can't remove those things on our own. We make some endeavor, but we can't do it on our own. And then take those away, and then there's another layer, and then there's another layer, and then there's another layer, and there's another layer, and another layer. Three miles thick of contaminated consciousness. We just keep with faith in the, the bhakti process. We continue cleansing and cleansing and cleansing. We experience it as we're going along. And then comes this, you know, really mature stage where one is fully cleansed and fully qualified and one is with profound humility feeling not qualified. We're over on this side feeling, well, I'm kind of qualified. I think you answered the second part. That's, so when I start to realize that there is a contamination and it's coming back and coming back while chanting or any time, I see that it's coming, but uh, it's not going away. So That's this unsteady bhakti question over here. Tendency is a tendency. It comes back again. What's the cure? Keep going. with faith in the bhakti process. We can just throw in the towel and say, oh, I, I'm a hopeless case. Bhakti is more powerful than our hopelessness. <laughs> we should maintain hope and faith. And how do we do that? Stay in the association of those that have faith. Stay in, stay in the association of devotees that are nicely engaged, sincerely engaged in the bhakti process. Stay with it. The cleansing, it'll get me go, move from unsteady to steady. Anishta to nishta. The problem is our contamination. It's not the process. And we may be more contaminated than the next fellow. So we need be more sincere and make more effort and strive more consistently because we, we need to. That's what we do. It's not a race. You know, we, if someone gets there before we get there, we, we lose. That's material. There's not a win-lose program. It's just need to, to continue with the bhakti process until we're clean. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Just a quick question on one of the slides you presented. Which one? 
saying, by following the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or undergoing atonement, sinful men do not become as purified as by chanting once the holy name of Lord Hari. Yeah, that's Shukadev Goswami's statement. Yeah. You, d you have doubt? No, the, the, the question ah. I have... The question is like just a background, uh, like once in every few years my friend come from India here, uh -huh. US, and for leadership meeting, and end of the meeting they drink and pubbing and all those things happens. Mm. So it so happened a couple of years back, he came and the slide is presented, so he read this slide and he said he chanted Hari Hari Hari, now I'm purified, so I can do anything. So that's what he was saying. So now he's again coming in two weeks from now, I want to have a better answer for him, what, how to explain him. Sure. Hasti Snan. You know. Elephant bathing. <laughs> Elephant goes in, makes himself very clean, comes to the shore, takes some dust with his trunk. I've seen it. And they throw dust all over their now just clean, still moist body. So now he's dirty again. So it doesn't mean he hasn't become cleansed but you don't become dirty again, consciously, deliberately, that's foolish. Don't be like an elephant. Stay clean. <clears throat> Sending on the strength of chanting is one of the offenses against the name. You won't get the full effect of the name if you do that. Don't be an elephant. Maharaj, who originally composed the Maha Mantra? Who originally composed the Maha Mantra? Yes. Who do you think? Where does everything come from? Vishnu. In fact, does that Maha Mantra have to be composed or can it be eternal? But in the current form, who formatted that, like 16 words? It's in Kali Sanartana Upanishad. So where did the Upanishads come from? Narayana. Right? And then Vyas wrote them down. But he, they, before they were written down, they were existing in sound. Then he just divided them in convenient form. It's eternal. It's a trick question. With your hands in the cookie jar, you know, you, it, you, it wasn't created, it was written down. Kali Sanartana Upanishad. Exactly in the sequence. Sometimes people reverse the sequence, and that's okay. But in the Upanishads, it's in the sequence that we have. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, in the back, back there? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, by going through the first three excellences, is it implied that uh, I cannot practice trying to be in constitutional position as a servant now. You can't do what? I, I can't try to cultivate the service mood towards Krishna. Why not? Uh, because I have so many impurities. That's okay. Put the, put the horse in the front position. That's exactly what the holy name does. It awakens the mood. My, oh, energy of the Supreme Lord, please engage me in service of Krishna. That's the meaning, that's the power, that's the purpose. Awaken the service mood. No, but I have so many contaminations, that's okay. Chant anyways, and the chanting is with that prayer. Is that all right? Thank you, Mary. Okay, anything from the ladies' side? Men have been hogging the show this morning. Okay. Oh. Hare Krishna Guru. Guru Maharaj, my question is about uh, prayers and shreyas. Um, when I'm uh, chanting, uh, the mind goes more uh, to the short term um, gain. 
because I'm, I won't be able to see, I can't envision the long-term um, goal and the gain. So um, it helps, helplessly, I feel that you know, it, I don't want it, but it is going. So I have a fear of that. Uh, mm, without wanting also, I'm committing an offense of uh, no, so the fruit of mentality. The punchline of your, I, I see the dilemma. Just say succinctly, what's the question? What to do? That's yeah. the question? Yeah. Well, you put the horse before the cart. That's what to do. You cultivate bhakti. Like you know, this, the previous question. There's there's contamination, or there's the affinity for the temporary, asat, trishna. You've heard that phrase. Bhakti Thakur presents it in um, Harinam Chintamani, saying that's one of the anartas. It blocks the power of the name because of anartas in the heart, and the anarta is this thirst for the impermanent, or my attention goes to the temporary. <clears throat> and that blocks the power of the holy name. So what do you do? You go to the holy name anyway. And the fullness of the power of the holy name may not be experienced, but you keep going there anyway with faith. And with that, similar to the question previously that Christina was asking, you then get some strength from the name and then you can attend to that tendency to go to the temporary on the strength, spiritual strength. But try to do it when there's just, you know, just you against material nature, this tendency for the temporary. You're going to lose. Maya is stronger. Maya's got us covered, big time, not just us. How many living entities are there in this world? Too many to count. Maya's very strong, not just with you. Maya's very strong, very, very, very. What to do? We go to the spiritual potency. Ma me vaye prapadyante. You can easily cross beyond, but not just on your own strength, not just the struggle with the prayas and tendency. Yes? More? Um, but? So, um, I'm, I'm just wondering that you know, if, um, when we commit uh, offenses, the taste will go from the chanting of the holy name. So, as long as we have the proper consciousness, then uh, it is okay? You cultivate. Not? You cultivate. It's a simple answer. Don't parse it up in, you know, little pieces. You cultivate. We're, 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 we're less than... You are... And we all are less than perfect. Krishna knows that. But we're trying to move towards him. And Krishna sees that too. So he doesn't, like, you know... Oh, you're offensive. I'm going to punish you. He'll help you. So therefore, we, we need this. That's the bhakti. We reach towards the all-powerful, starting with the name and those resources that help us go to the name, the devotees and the scripture and, and everything, instructions, just like this one. Just... Reach for the holy name, despite I'm weak. Krishna knows you're weak, but he knows that you're trying too. And he'll support that. You're making the effort, and then there's the hundred steps that Krishna will take towards you for your effort. That's our hope. Ashabanda. You know the phrase? Nectar devotion. Hope against hope. I'm unqualified. I'm, but I'm shameless. I'm so unqualified. I'm, I'm trying anyways. Because that's my only hope. Krishna is merciful. That's my hope. 
That's bhakti. That's the horse that will pull the cart out of the temporary unsteady bhakti to the steady. From the prayas to the shreyas. To cultivation. Anushilana. Okay. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.